Welcome to our kitchen. I'm glad you could join me on this walk through Mark 8 today. And if you want to have a cup of tea, stop the video and make yourself one and we can join together. But first I would say thanks for giving your time and your energy and your gifts to teaching this class. It's very significant. And your love for them and your prayer for them, uh, it becomes an important part of your preparation for teaching. My name is Dwayne Beck. I grew up near Heston, Kansas on a wheat farm and um, I've pastored for 45 years, retired about six years ago. And Mark, Mark's gospel has really shaped and transformed my life. And there will be little snippets of that come out over the, over the times that I have with you. If I were teaching the lesson, my main approach would be to work towards spiritual transformation. I have a, a PowerPoint that you will see that's just very short and it just shows information, formation, and transformation. And we move from the content of the story to who we are as a person and how our life has been shaped and how our responses and reactions uh, to various people in various situations come out automatically. But we want our responses and reactions to come out like Jesus. And so that's the transformation process. Spiritual growth, I think, is, is um, fascinating to watch. One thing is that it grows out of relationships, and so the relationships that you have with your class become very important. Um, the other thing is that spiritual growth has two steps. The first step is learning to know myself, and the second step is learning to know uh, Jesus. So we take steps. The more I learn to know of myself, the more I open myself up to Jesus. And the more I learn to know of Jesus, the more I can receive from him. And so following the path of Jesus is this, two, is this step over and over. And we'll see how the disciples learn to know themselves and how they learn to know Jesus and how that comes together in more and more transformation. I would suggest that you begin your class by telling stories with this in mind an origin story. An origin story is a story in your life that has impacted your life and has changed the trajectory of your life. It becomes a key turning point. Let me give you an illustration from my own story. When I was 19 year old, years old, a sophomore at Heston College, in the wintertime, I was invited to go with the team of, of students uh, to give programs to churches and to youth groups. But before I could say yes, I had to deal with myself because I knew that I could not have integrity and authenticity in my talking with these people if I didn't have my priorities straight. And I knew immediately that my priorities were with sports. And so I struggled with that for a couple of weeks. I had two weeks to make up my mind. And finally, I remember sitting in a recliner all alone in my home and saying, God, I give you my life forever. And that was the turning point of my life, the trajectory. Much has changed. I would love to tell you more about it. But you need to keep your story to three minutes. And I would suggest that you tell your story. If you want to try this experiment, you tell your story of where your life was changed, the turning point of your life, who was involved in it. And, but only take three minutes, and it's hard to keep at that. But hand out cards to people, um, note cards, so that they can begin to write their origin story. Maybe give them a minute or so after you're finished just to jot down names or events or times. And um, then email them during the week and ask if there's any, any volunteer to tell their origin three-minute origin story the next Sunday. Now, to Mark's gospel. Mark's gospel is short, fast-moving, and it begins with Jesus' baptism. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Mark, Mark starts out. Now, most scholars agree, excuse me, that Mark relied on Peter as the main source of his stories. And likely, they say, that Mark and Peter were in Rome during the mid to late 60s, when Nero was persecuting Christians, and when the Jerusalem temple was obliterated by, by the Romans. This was an amazing time of persecution, of upheaval. And I imagine Mark wanted to tell his people the story of Jesus. 
Now, if I were teaching this lesson from Mark 8, verses 27 through 38, I would, I would focus not so much on the denial or the prediction, I mean, the rebuke of Peter and the rebuke of Jesus, but I would focus on verse 34. He called the crowds with his disciples and said, if any want to become my followers, if anybody wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. You don't do that immediately and it becomes the walk. And so we learn about the walk of denying oneself and taking up the cross as we move from Caesarea Philippi in the north where they are at at this point, down to Jerusalem. And we'll have an eight week period during Lent to look at those different uh, stories that, that help us to discover what it means to deny ourselves. What denying oneself means is to, that you just put all your eggs in the basket of Je in Jesus' basket. He's your number one priority. You seek first the kingdom of God. And you find, you, you, you begin to be aware of the times that you, you become first. And then you give that to Jesus and he becomes first. So I would work with that and talk, about, talk with people about how they might handle that within their class. Now, one of the things that Mark does, it's very interesting. He often slips in a story, either just before this significant interaction with the disciples or immediately following the significant interaction with the disciples. And at this point, he slips in a story, verses 22 through 26, <clears throat> where the blind man from the village is, is uh, touched by Jesus and healed, but Jesus had to touch him twice. So Jesus spits on his hands, touches the man's eyes and says, can you see? And he says, oh, I can see people, but they look like trees walking around. And Jesus touched his eyes again and the man could see clearly. And I, I think that Peter saw this story as very significant in his life. And Mark slipped it in because it is a part of learning how to deny oneself and follow Jesus. I can just hear Peter telling Mark, you know, one of the amazing things, Mark, about Jesus is that he stuck with me and he kept touching my life again and again and again and again so that I could see clearly. And I kept putting blinders on and he would touch my eyes again. Jesus, the conquering Messiah, conquered my life with his loving, truthful touches. And I could see more clearly the people that Jesus loved. Now, I would encourage you to end your class with this prayer exercise. It's actually a blessing on each person individually. It's, it's adapted from, from some words from the resurrection story in Mark 16 where the young man sitting at the tomb tells the three women, you go tell your brothers that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee and there you will see him. I would like for you to take time to go around the room. Al, and everybody prays this prayer. Al, Jesus is going ahead of you into your week and there you will see him. And then you keep going on around so that everybody has this blessing spoken to them. And to conclude, I would say, Jesus is going ahead of you into your class, and there you will see him. Thanks.